Hello, welcome back for part two. Knew you'd be there. Chris Wilder, the Sheffield United manager, is. So is a former Blade, Kevin Gage. Uh, and you two, of course, have known each other for a very, very long time since you arrived uh, in Chris's first spell as a player at, uh, at United. So go back a heck of a long way, about 92, something like that. Yeah, it's, been, yeah. it's been a while, isn't it? Yes, we, we, yeah. didn't, we didn't actually play together, though, because Chris was out on loan and I came in. And, he took and, me uh, place, no, I don't want to say that. <laughs> <laughs> that's what he I'm forced me out. He nice. forced me out. That's what me. He won't force you out as a manager, though. <laughs> Promise you that. <laughs> That's guaranteed not to happen. We were talking about the World Cup and various styles of playing, etc. Uh, remiss of me not really to mention in part one um, the pride of Sheffield and Sheffield United in Harry Maguire and Kyle Walker. You know, they, you must, your chest must have been swelling at uh, times. Both of you, actually, about that. Yeah, brilliant. Yeah. I mean, especially like at the end of the game, I think he was, he was with... Uh, some of the supporters who had a Sheffield United flag as well, yeah. so that was great for him. And, and he's obviously been to a few games as well. And uh, I, I managed to get a number for him and wished him all the best. I thought he was outstanding. I thought, I think a lot, a lot was talked about the England team as well. And, and maybe at times, maybe got carried away a little bit. You know, I think they, they got a perfect storm at times. You know, the, 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 the group that they were in and, um, and obviously the, the route to the, to the semi-final. But I don't think anybody can underestimate, especially what Harry did in, in the World Cup and, and obviously put himself onto, a, onto another level, really. Yeah, did you, did, did you enjoy the World Cup as a spectacle? Oh, it was fabulous. Yeah. Well, I heard Chris in the first half saying, you, know, you want to get excited about the England team. And, and I was that, you know, idiot in the pub with the English <laughs> shirt and the hat on going absolutely mental. Yeah. And it's nice, it's nice to be able to let yourself go and support England. How like long that. is it since we felt like that? Well, it's, about, it's, 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 a, it's decades, but, I think, to be honest. Yeah, but it wasn't just that. It was the whole tournament. Lifted you yeah. to your feet with the goals and everything like that. Did, as a working manager, and, and you're busy anyway, did, it almost rules your life, I should imagine, because two, two or three, three times a day in the, in the first week, yeah. you're kind of saying... I'm, 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 I'm working because no, I want to watch that's a good football. That's a good way of putting it, really, yeah, Al, isn't it? I'm working, working yeah. same front of the TV yeah. with a, a bag of Doritos <laughs> and, a, and a couple of couple of bowls. Yeah, but, I mean, it does take some tolerance at home, doesn't it? I mean, I, it called for some tolerance in my house, and then <laughs> I found that Mrs Biggs was really getting into it. She started doing running commentaries my, as well, dear. I dear. found my missus <laughs> humming... It's coming home. <laughs> and she knows nothing yeah, about no, football. Nothing. And she's, she's humming the theme tunes. I mean, it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, I'm just getting out of my head. Thanks very much for that, that <laughs> reminder. Um, coming back to Sheffield United topics, uh, we, we talked about the club record deal today. Uh, John Egan, a really potentially very influential signing for Sheffield United. Um, a bit of business that's been going on a while now for, for Chet Evans, I think, to, to Fleetwood Town. Just clarify the, uh, where that's at, because I, I'm, I'm hearing it's a season long, or I have heard it's a season long, or is it a half season? Which, well, which well one first and foremost, it? you know, he's, he's, he's in our plans. You know, yeah. we, uh, it's been unfortunate for him last season. Um, he obviously uh, didn't really get a run of games. He, he had a, uh, a difficult start um, with, it, with, it, with his injury. We managed eventually to clear it up, and we've just been talking about it off air. You know, I think any medical, the, the majority of players will have something wrong with them, and, and it's something that we couldn't, we couldn't really find and get to the bottom, of, even through a, an extensive medical. And eventually we did. And he worked extremely hard to, to get back involved in the first team. But I think when you've been out that long, and, and, and Kev, I think, will back it up, he needs to go and play 15 or 20 games of football. You know, and with the players that we've got at the top of the pitch at the moment and the ones that we're looking to bring in, you know, we, we talked about it and we thought that, you know, unless he goes and gets those games and, and, and goes and bangs a few goals in and gets battle hardened and, and he's playing Saturday, Tuesday, Saturday, Tuesday, yeah. um, his body will adjust to that, to that full time. Um, uh, playing, you know, you can do all the work on the training ground, but getting up yeah. to speed on a, on, on a pitch is completely different. So, so is it half up to a season Christmas. or a full season? Yeah, up to Christmas, and then we'll view it. And if he's doing great, um, and you know, we feel we need to bring him back, we've got that option and that ability. And if we feel well, we're okay, we're going well, and Ched's going well, you know, uh, who knows? So, you so know, we've both got the option we've, for we've, a season. We've, we've got real, we've got real flexibility with it. Yeah. Yeah, flexibility either way. Um, so, how many players do you, do you have on a list that you've not brought into the studio tonight, but it would, be too, it would be longer than my list, I'm sure, if you did. When you set out uh, and, ta and target players, uh, and only a, probably a fraction of them have, have, have got into the media, let, let's say, and even some of those might not be right, 
Just how many in total would you say that have been on a list of potential targets for well, something like this? We get the obvious obvious ones from agents getting punted to us all yeah. the time. Um, and uh, I basically just stick it on Mitch's toes <laughs> to deal with. <laughs> so uh, just pass pass the, all the stuff on to Mitch and, you know, we we uh, we stick, stick it all together and look at all the, all, all the players, look at clips, look at stats, look at ages, look at what we're looking for in a player as well, looking at who they've played for, where, where they've been and what they've done, age and everything, really. Mm -hmm. So there's loads of different boxes that they've got to tick. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. then, then obviously looking at the, the financial aspect as well, because that's got a fear as well. Well, exactly. Are you doing sums all the time, thinking... Yeah, if... like Carol Vorderman, yeah. Yeah, time, yeah. I'm like chopping that one off to put on that one yeah. and doing that one and, and writing. I think, I think if any of our oh, boys are watching, he's... they'll look at the amount of times I write down stuff and, and our team and this, that and the other, and he can go in there and he can do that and the numbers, that it's just... It's just or, you know, a moving target all the time. So he's he's yeah. shown his age now because Carol Vaughan yeah. hasn't done countdown. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who is it? Who is it? It's it's Rachel now. Riley. Rachel now. Riley, right? right. Yeah. Rachel Riley. Come on. Now. Yeah, me too. Yeah. I'm with Carol Vaughan. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with Chris. I've not watched this. And, and that, we're talking about those lists. I mean, that list is constantly evolving, isn't it? There's players already coming off that list because they're yeah. signed somewhere else, and there'll be other players added to it. We've, we've talked. To, yeah, we've, 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 we've talked about this. We've talked about this. It, it sometimes looks as if you've not got a plan, but you have. But yeah. it's, it's, it moves. It moves with prices. It moves with availability. Mm. You know, used to say that, let's say, a, you know, uh, a Burnley signed somebody from Italy, then that, you know, releases one that all of a sudden thought it was in the plans and now he's not in the plans, yeah. and then that, that becomes available. Yeah. Is that frustrating to you? Do you, do you ever kind of <laughs> lie awake at night and, or, and, and worry about this, or do you think, hey, it'll just take care of itself? Which no, I've got, I've got foot... My wife will, will, uh, will back this up. I've, she'll, she'll look at me and you've got, you've got footballs in your head, what's in your coconut, you know, and, uh, you know, it's footballs and numbers in, in my head all, all, all the time, trying to work out and stuff like that. And, yeah, sometimes you have to snap out of it, but you, you very rarely get... Get a get an opportunity to get away from it. Yeah. So you've come in here tonight to get away from it, have you? <laughs> yeah, I did and and you invited her in as well. So I know that. I know <laughs> I that. Did, I Things, did. You know that. You tried yeah. to be a little bit sneaky there. I did. But there's no way she's going on. I asked you. I know. Yeah. And you considered no. it for 0.3 of a Correct. second and yeah. just said no. She took over. Yeah. But I think you feared that the, the real manager of Sheffield United would, would come I'll through. I'll get sussed. <laughs> I'll get found out. <laughs> yeah. Francesca, come in another time when he's not here. <laughs> No, it's been. Uh, it, it must be difficult uh, to, to live with that all the time, especially as I, I've said this to you before. Uh, you can take great pride as a manager who's constantly worked for 17 years without a break. That's because nobody's given you a break. And you, I don't really want one as well. Alex. No, I'm, yeah. I'm all right. I'm all right. You're okay. You're okay as you are. Um, where were we? I was going to talk about the Inter Milan friendly, among other things. Um, and, and one or two other kind of bits and pieces that you can kind of put to bed and clarify. But Tuesday night at Bramall Lane, not m many clubs have got, a fr Kevin, first of all, a, a friendly as pre prestigious as this yeah, one. It's fabulous, I mean, isn't it? Yeah, as, I, as soon as it was announced, I had a couple of people on the phone going, oh, can we come to that, can we come to that? So I've got a couple of tickets for them, yeah. yeah. And everybody's, everybody's really revved up about it. And the good thing is, is they're bringing their, their proper team, yeah. aren't they? So yeah, they're not come, they're not coming to mess about, you know. They're, they're bringing some proper players, and yeah. it'll be a very good test for us. I think it? they're bringing about sixty staff. I think the Cotthorne Hotel's <laughs> been booked out, and they've they've ordered this, that, and the other. So they, I think I was speaking to the hotel manager as well, and they asked to see if they could change all the mattresses in the uh, in the hotel, and obviously <laughs> got blanked on that one. So yeah, I mean, I've got to say, I know we're going to do some work, the club over the next two or three days. If the words ever, uh, and, and I, I, I totally get pre-season friendlies, and sometimes you know they're, they're a little bit dull and they're not they're not at full tilt. But this one, you know, I think this is an exception. This is a, a, an absolute brilliant friendly for the football club to yeah. play a, a powerhouse like Inter Milan. Mm. And you know, I, I've got to say, and I know people are away, and the financial aspect of it is is difficult. But you know. For Inter Milan to rock up to to Bramall Lane on yeah. Tuesday night, where they're fully and 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 uh, you know you know hopefully a couple of our new signings making uh, making the debuts, I, I'd be uh, really hopeful that it's a really healthy crowd. Obviously, I'd I'd uh, I'd like it to go without any incident because 
I think the last time uh, Sheffield United played an Italian club, Kevin <laughs> you, was in, I wasn't oh, involved. You were amazing. Think, yeah. I think Gage was. <laughs> and it, and it kicked off. <laughs> you stayed on the field, didn't you? It's Remarkably, <laughs> yeah. It, it, was, uh, it was. It brings back some horrible memories. <laughs> but I think amazing, we, had four, we had four sent off. Four it sent was ridiculous. Off. Yeah. And, and, and the manager. I can't understand why, you know, with the, with the likes of and I'm Hodge, massive, Hodge and, and Harry being involved. And I'm running yeah. about like an idiot in the second half, you know, yeah. with... with, with being outnumbered like three to one, <laughs> four to one, and they treated it like a training game. It, it, at the end, it was just a total farce. I was, trying, I was watching that, trying to report it from paper. I couldn't make head or tail of it, sense of it at all. I thought it was just going to be a glorified friendly. But then, coming on to this one, uh, in, Inter Milan, this is an opportunity, is it, for you to say, hey, this is, this is something close to my team for the season, something close. Let's measure it. Let's measure them. Can you can you measure them in a game like I that? I think it's just a great experience for the players. You know, yeah. we, we 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 look at our stats and a lot of the games we have a, we have quite a bit of the ball. So um, you know, one thing is is certain is they're going to be fitter coming off that game than uh, than possibly yeah. any of the pre-season ones because they're going to have to run around because obviously the technical aspect of the game and the way they move the ball about the pitch. And I think, you know, the Italians want to win as well, and, and, and so do so do we, you know, yeah. without a shadow of a doubt. I've said this all along, you know, pre-season games, you know, training games, five-a-sides, we have to put that mentality into the players, and uh, and even and even pre-season. And, yeah, there's no three points on it, but, you know, Ched scores, Ched scores with uh, five minutes to go over in Portugal, and, and everybody walks out of the game really happy. Players are happy, yeah. Ched's, Ched's delighted. Supporters that we took, you know, eight or nine hundred of those, Want to see want to see players run around and want to see their team win and um, yeah. and that'll be the case on Tuesday. We had an excellent uh, win and first half performance, especially I believe at Bradford City yeah. in midweek with a with a three two uh, victory. David McGoldrick. Now there were a few kind of sniffs or you know uh, w with him coming on trial, and you thought to yourself, hang on a minute, this is a fellow of repute in the Championship for a number of years. He's only thirty. <laughs> <laughs> You're a bit I'm dismayed by yeah, the reaction to it. Yeah, kind of. yeah. Well, I, I understand it because, but you know, I, I think you know. Well, I'd like to believe that people trust my, my judgment now, and I've, I've earned that right because of of what we've done. And you know, we, we're not bringing four or five trialists, but he's a proper footballer. He's had a few injury problems, but you know, if you know, if there's no deals out there, or this is a better deal for us financially in terms of what he brings to the for the football club, I'll push for it. I'll push for it and try and make it happen. And uh, I suppose we look at we look at the Leon Clark situation, and people are saying, you know, you know, what have we done with Leon? You know, you know, at different other clubs, he's he's not done this and he's not done that. I'm not I'm not a snob in terms of in terms of who we sign and, and where we get them from, as proved in terms of the players that we've no. we've already got. But you know, in the training session, he wants to come in, which is definitely a tick in the box straight away. He's not a prima donna footballer. He's moved back up to Nottingham. That was a bit of an issue when he was he was living in Ipswich and he had his family back, back in Nottingham. And I think, you know, a lot of... And we've been in, obviously both involved in football. There are issues that when you do live away from where, where you work, the travelling, the amount of time that you're in the car and, and this, that and the other, it, it's, not, it's not an ideal scenario. No. Um, but, you know, if he, he does the business, and, and I've got to say, so far, he was outstanding. And... Uh, I know the, the, all the supporters that, that went up to, uh, to, to Bradford in midweek and they put a decent side out and, uh, you know, I've got to say him and Leon were, were absolutely outstanding first off in the game when they, when they, when they played on, on Tuesday night. Well, clearly you're looking to add strikers, not to lose strikers yeah. and you've got a couple who figured highly in the scoring charts last season, yeah. Leon Clark, but he's sharp as well. Now, again, you, you hear bits and pieces. There was a story the other day that, that Sunderland wanted him, although Billy himself has said he can't see him self playing for anybody but you I mean is that well no no he's, uh, he's, he's, he said the exact same things for me today because you know I'm, I'm transparent with all the players in terms of what happens and, and, and what goes off I think it's the only way to be uh, you know I've been in that situation before where a manager's not told me about about an interest and we you know we have to you know we have to be honest with these players and um, and and up front, and uh, you know, I talked, I talked to Billy about a bit of speculation. Has it come from anybody? Has it come from your agent? Where's it, where's it come from? And uh, and Billy obviously said that you know um, he don't want to play for anybody else. He don't want to play in the championship, and that's that's good enough for me. He's had a mm. he had a great season last year. I think he relishes the opportunity of going again in the championship. He relishes the competition that we're going to bring in. And, and why wouldn't you? And I think any really good player 
would not want to be comfortable without competition. And I, and, and I said that at the start of pre-season. If you're just happy for us not to bring any players in, then you're not at the right club. We're going to bring players in. We're going to push you. We're going to try and make our better players better with hopefully, you know, getting the signings Yeah, the yeah. And I, I, Sam Gallagher of Southampton has been the most consistently mentioned How many more names are you going to chuck us? That's the last one. He's got London. Yeah. Where's he going? Where's he going? Where's he going? He's not one of them, Not for two hours, <laughs> yeah. I've got, I haven't come onto sheet two yet. Yeah. 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 He's not going to tell you anyway, so. I know he's not going to tell me, but he's not, he's not going to say, he's not going to say, say no. Are, are you confident that, I mean, look, Looking for a replacement for Brooks, and you're looking, you've been looking for two strikers. That would kind of complete it. Are you confident that you'll get those three positions filled before the start of the season starts or not? Yeah, I believe we are. And if we don't, the window shuts on the loans to the end of the month as well. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, we, we, we are. I, I, I've got to say, I think, I think we're an attractive club to come, to come and play for. I think what we did last year, the, the exposure that we had, on the box, you know, the, the, the games against Sheffield Wednesday, I think, and Leeds were uh, one of the, the most watched games on, on the championship in, from Sky's point of view. And we were on for quite, a, quite a few times as well. And I think we're a, we're a decent club to, to join them from a, from a player's point of view. Be very and, and I, I'd just in, interject here because if I was a Premier League manager or, or someone of that ilk or who makes the decisions, you'd want your players to come to a club like Sheffield United who play the game the way Chris gets his team to play. Mm. Because they play proper football, as he would call it. Uh, they play football in the right way. And they're going to get a lot of the ball and they'll be taught the right things and they'll be part of a great group. It's not like you're going to go somewhere and you'll be, you know, We're not kick and rush exactly, but you won't be played in, in the style that the Premiership this managers will want them to improve. The style that players enjoy. I mean, like, Chris will tell you more than that. I, I'm, yeah. I've got my supporter head on. My Chef United fan hat on, if you like, and, and I've said to Chris, after, I think it was after the Derby game or Villa game away, and I said, my God, that is a good team to watch. You know, I, I genuinely enjoy watching Chef United yeah. play football. Well, me too. I think we all, because it's we all I, I think, the, to I think the players enjoy it, enjoy it as well. You know, yeah. they, they, you know there's, there's obviously boundaries and rules and stuff like that, and there's got to be a structure, but I think you see it, you see in a Sheffield United team that's not playing with any fear, and I, you know, I think that I've... I've watched it over over a certain amount of years, and and, and possibly Kev's watched it more than me. Really, that I think that's one thing that that they have had. Uh, yeah. You know, they have had they have had they played fearful football mm -hmm. individually and, and and as a team. And I think our performances are one where you know this is us, and we're gonna we're gonna go after you. And if you're better than us, then we'll we'll hold his hands up. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I, gen I genuinely think we hit new heights last season. At times, and not just the games we won. Sometimes, it, as, you, as you said in the first half, some of the games we lost, you know, we just didn't get the breaks and didn't get the goals. But our performance was were, were yeah. of a different level that I'd never seen before. I heard it in the press box quite a lot, and I worked with Neil Redfern a couple of times on Talksport, and he made a point. Well, I'm really glad to be here. He says I always enjoy coming mm. here to. to I think watch as games. well, I like you know, it, it is such <coughs> a it is such a positive. The ground's a brilliant ground. I think yeah. we all know that. You know the the, the, the way he's got an historic feel to it, um, a traditional feel to it in a in a modern way. I think you go to a lot of grounds now. You know, and these they've not got the balance right. And I think no. we have. Yeah. And the, and the noise the noise levels as you know, Kev's obviously played there when there's been a full house and stuff like that. Uh, and and I've obviously been involved in it and, it, and it really just gets you going. And they do, they 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 make it a, a positive environment and give the players, and I've always said it, the best opportunity to produce yeah. the best performances. And uh, you know, there's times where it doesn't go well, and I, I get I get the moan and groan and, and stuff like that, of course. But I think that it's uh, you go to a lot of grounds now, and it's half empty, half empty in terms of attendances, but most importantly in terms of. In terms of atmosphere, and I, I, I certainly wouldn't expect it to be no. this year as well. And so much of that atmosphere is reflected in a new book that you've uh, contributed to. Uh, Danny Hall of the Sheffield Star has written, uh, he's one of our own. Uh, I think we've all had a little bit to, to do with it, by and large. You much more than most of us, and that's out in September. So I'm looking forward to reading that, as I, I'm sure you are. And a good start to the season would go perfectly hand in hand with it. Something else that we've come to expect from Sheffield United <laughs> is that you play the game not in a certain way in terms of being on the front foot, 
but let's say in a, a fairly principled way. And um, you're not on Twitter, Chris, but uh, you, you and I are, Kevin. And I, th I think we both had a bit to say about one of the world's top players, didn't we, during the, uh, during the World Cup. There was very little that blighted it, but whenever Brazil played, one player got mentioned oh. <laughs> more than any. Do you think I was going to mention? I was wondering where you were going there. No. But uh, yeah, uh, that would be there for mate Neymar, yeah. How did you, <clears throat> how did you rolling around? Uh, it's disappointing. <clears throat> yeah, well, I think you just, as I said, you know, it's, there, there is certain professional traits that happen in uh, at every club and in every division. That is one of the things that I've got to say disappointed me a little bit about the uh, about the championship last year was was the antics of, of, of some of the benches and, and some of the players, individuals that we come up against. Um, you know, in terms of physical contact, I, I love the physical side of it. You know, I think it's got to stay, and, it, and uh, um, you know, I, I, I believe maybe we have to be careful. Mm. Uh, but you know, we don't, it, we don't yeah. lose it. That there is a balance. But you know, this is a, a contact sport, and 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 players have to expect that you know, they might they might have to endure a little bit of a little bit of contact now and again, yeah. and uh, and find a way find a way around it. And there's there's somebody there that can that can deal with it. But I think you know we're both you know I think we were both honest footballers as well um, that you, you know that didn't enjoy. You know that part of the game. If 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 you come up against it, do you, th do you think we were lacking a bit then last season in, in many ways? Or are you talking about opposing teams? Do you think we could get a bit stronger and a bit more evil? For I think the better word, I think or? I think a little bit Cute. more streetwise. I always yeah. remember, and I, I really enjoyed the Norwich City away game because uh, obviously I didn't enjoy the own game. Yeah. Uh, because there were certain antics that went, that that went on uh, in in that game that I've I've fully. Behind what what I said, you know, and it's I don't think people want to see it, you know, I, and I don't think the English football supporter wants to see their players rolling about, and I don't think that you'd want to see our players rolling around and trying to get people sent off and 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 and, and the like. Um, so I didn't enjoy that. We played the game in a uh, we learned a little bit in terms of making good better decisions, not in terms of the falling over part of it, but you know. Doing, you know, making certain decisions, being a little bit more streetwise in, in our approach. We were a little bit naive personally in the first part of the season. So, if that's something that, that we gained in the second part of the season, added to obviously the, the, the stuff that we do. Mm. But uh, generally speaking, in good shape. Are you looking forward to the season as much as ever? I know you and I, you and I are. And I, I, the season comes around, I can't wait. But what about you as a manager? Do you, three weeks in it, just over three weeks, are you sort of. Like I, think the player, I think the players are now. I think like Kev's been involved in many a pre-season, and and I've got to say a lot harder than than what I'm watching and and, yeah. and, and overseeing at the moment. You know, the the army camps and <laughs> uh, and the running that that was uh, that was put on. And I think players want to want to be involved in proper matches now. Uh, they want to get into it now. And uh, when you come to sort of you know, two weeks, two weeks away. Now they're really they're looking forward, and they've got the, they've got you know they've got the first game in the sights. Yeah, really, really tough and intriguing championship. You could go to any number of clubs who have expectations of getting out of it, but with only 40 seconds left of the show, I've got no further time to raise that with you, which I'm really sad about. And all the, the other 50 names that I were going to mention, <laughs> I haven't got time to, to, to mention yeah, those either. Do it in the pub in about 20 minutes. <laughs> we'll do it in the pub, yeah. We, cameras, <laughs> take, hey, take cameras, can we get the cameras <laughs> to go across the road? <laughs> thanks ever so much. It'll be a real pleasure to see you again, Chris, and Enjoy thanks it. very much for coming in and enduring that... Uh, that sort of uh, interrogation, shall I say, and uh, Kevin as well. It's really good to see you. Thank and, you. It's been uh, it's nice. To, it's nice to listen to you guys going at it, you know, first half and bits yeah. and bobs. And, I, and I've I've, I've, I've learned a lot today from what Chris has said. <laughs> thanks, yeah. thanks, guys. We're adjourning across the road on my YouTube channel. If you miss, see you next week. Bye bye.